Where are you going, Ben? Woods. You going to the woods? It is a bright and sunshiny morning here on the farm. Right now, this is about the seventh consecutive day that our high temperatures have been at or over 70 degrees, which is about 21 Celsius. And it's probably gonna be a little bit of a, a havoc wrecker. I was reading some conversation on a local group where they were talking about this happened last winter here in South Carolina and a lot of people's figs and like the things that blossom early in spring, they all blossom this when this happens, whenever you have this, this weird warm weather in the middle of winter and uh, it's gonna freeze again. It's actually gonna be below freezing next week and all those things that bloom will lose their blossoms and it might cost the harvest of those things this year. So that's not great. Hey Gabriel, good morning. Hey Miriam, what's up girly? Hello goaties. So Maya's bringing the feed up and I'll have to pause to milk, but I'm gonna show you guys that our big red barn is almost entirely completed. They were waiting on one small detail to be brought in, but the structure itself is done. It's amazing. And now that the company's done putting it together, we will start working on the things we're gonna do. Here it is. The animals are all just like crowding around it right now. What do you guys think? What do y'all think? It's so beautiful. So Helen does approve. She told me last night. No, you, Helen. Now you can have a baby in here in just a few weeks. We'll come back over here after I milk and uh, I'll show you all inside and what we're planning to do with it. Y'all see the tree line all cleared? They finished the clear cut harvesting all these trees. So I actually got the paperwork out and I was looking at Helen's like documentation and, and basically the conversation that I had with the lady I bought her from. And she was artificially inseminated um, and the semen that was used to sire her calf was from a place called Select Sires. I, I did all this like reading about it and I, it, I unintentionally like bought a really good cow that was bred really good and I didn't really realize how good it was until I started digging into it the other day because the lady had told me like this, the bull's name which is um, Oliver P. And I mean, when she said that to me, it didn't have really any value to me because I'm pretty new to cows. But I knew that Helen was what I wanted um, as far as being disease free. And I did, I wasn't like super interested in having a registered dairy herd. Hope is not registered. And though most of my goats are registered, I've not really like kept up with that and registered the, the kids and all that stuff. Uh, but I thought with Helen, the fact that she was like guaranteed bred and that she was guaranteed d disease free was enough for me to be like, okay, like this is, this is what I want. Well, I started doing this research about the sire of her calf and he's like a really fantastic bull. And I'm really excited. I just got really, really excited and she's due in about three weeks, um, three and a half weeks. So towards the end of January, we're gonna prepare for the early end of that, but be emotionally ready for it to take a little bit longer. And I am thrilled, but also a little nervous. I have a lot of experience with kidding goats, but obviously we've never had a calving because we've not had cows until the last few months. And I've never been around it. Like I, I haven't, I've never seen a cow give birth. I've never been hands on. And so from everything I'm reading, like 90% of the time, everything's fine. And then for the small percentage that something might go wrong, you pretty much always call a vet out. Um, I am getting some things on hand, which I'll share with you guys, kind of what we're doing preventatively to make sure that she's okay and that she comes through okay. But also like what we're having on hand just in case we need to intervene. 
So y'all, I thought I was gonna absolutely hate this being clear cut, but I'm actually okay with it. I loved that dark backdrop of trees to our property, but it being so open and bright is kind of nice too. I was a little concerned about like just critters, um, namely like foxes and raccoons and possums and, and all of that like coming to our farm more that they lost their habitat here with these this pine being harvested but there's so many other forests around here that i think they really went there we'll see but i mean all of our vulnerable animals like our chickens and stuff they're in um they're in electric wire and right now they're within electric wire within the ca the cattle corral and then gabriel's outside that so i mean they're pretty well protected so we we haven't had any issues the last few days that those trees have been down but I don't know. I was I was really bummed when they started. I was like, oh, it's gonna change our property so much. I am considering now that our prevailing wind might change. So you kind of want to take into consideration when you're building gardens and different things like where your wind is coming from, uh, because sometimes that matters. We don't get like super high winds here. It's not like like in the prairie in the Midwest where you really really have to consider a lot of wind breaks and stuff. But they did leave one line of deciduous trees, so there is at least something. And during the gardening season and the growing season when that's really gonna matter those will have leaves on them so there will be a little bit of a windbreak and that's really nice so helen being bred to a nice jersey is really exciting he's polled um, and he's just got excellent milk lines and i actually got up next to her on her her right side the other day and i felt the i felt the calf kick which was really cool she's so small that i was kind of worried i was like oh man is it, is it okay? Like, is she actually do when they said she's due? And I was kind of getting a little bit like skeptical really, but that's what led me to go back and look at the paperwork. And uh, after getting the documentation, seeing all this stuff, I'm like, no, it is what they said. She's just small and she's only three. So that's not, you know, that's not unusual. So one of the things that they can do with cows when doing artificial insemination is they can actually sex the semen. So Helen was impregnated with sexed semen. So she should be having a heifer. Now it's not 100%, but it does great in the odds that you're gonna get a heifer, which when you are breeding dairy breeds, obviously you're primarily keeping a dairy breed for dairy. And that makes the female offspring much more valuable to have. It's the same with dairy goats because dairy breeds, I mean, you've noticed before and I've talked about how bony these girls are. The bulls are actually very bony too. They're, they're beefier looking than the females are, um, especially because the females put so much into their milk. But dairy bulls, they don't put weight on the way a beef does. A lot of people are like, oh, well, we'll raise dairy and then we'll just put the excess calves in the freezer and while you can do that as far as like feed to meat conversion you're not getting the most bang for your buck raising a full dairy steer to eat by sexing semen you you eliminate having excess male offspring that you don't need which is it's good and i was glad to see that helen was impregnated with sexed semen because I would really prefer to have a heifer calf. At this point we've actually already lined out a bull which you guys will learn more about later and I don't need a male jersey because I don't necessarily want to breed full bred jerseys for the reason that I said, the extra males. I mean, trying to figure out what do you do with them. I, I would rather just not have that problem on my hands. I have, however, tried to make sure I don't get my hopes up too high because it's not 100% and Helen's baby might not be a heifer. It could still be a bull. It's just, should be a heifer. Thank you, Hope. Helen's gonna be really pushy because I don't have her food right now. We gotta wait till we go feed the goats before I bring it or else they'll take it from her. Maybe not, maybe she'll stay there thinking Jeremiah's coming back. Right now, Helen's getting like 
a couple of cups of grain. She looked a little skinny when she got here, but she's so docile that I think she was probably getting pushed around. She was with a lot of cows before she came here. So we, the people we got her from, they were trying to feed her extra. We were feeding her. Uh, morning and evening and then we bumped it down to just morning and now I've just bumped it down to a couple cups of grain a day I actually asked my friend Hannah who I got hope from who really knows cows and that's what she advised me to do because I knew that dairy cows and it's the same with goats their babies when they're pregnant this clay is so slippery and it would not be cute if I fell down their babies grow the most during the last three or four weeks of the pregnancy and so you have to be mindful of what you're feeding the pregnant doe or cow um, during that last period of time, especially with Helen because she's so small framed. I don't want to feed her a ton and her calf get bigger than she can easily deliver. So right now she's down to just a couple cups of grain a day. She's in great body condition. And that way um, her rumen is used to having some grain so I can up that when the baby's born. But I'm not overfeeding her so that calf is gonna grow at a, at a good pace. Speaking of pregnant mamas, did you need some spotlight Miss Nestle? Check this belly out. I can actually see movement in here right now. So on a goat and on a cow, because they're ruminants, um, left is lunch, which I'm facing the back of her, so do this so it's clear. Left is lunch, right is baby. So here on May May, left is lunch, right is baby. They have so much grass right now that their left side stays looking pretty full. But like if you were feeding in a more confined place that they didn't have so much brows, um, you would be able to tell a lot more, especially later in their pregnancy, their right side sticks out a lot further. All right, so I'm on the lean-to of the barn that is on the same side as our house. I'm gonna go in one of these doors. On the inside of our barn is fully unfinished. We did not pay for this crew to do anything in here because we are saving a lot of money by doing all of this stuff ourselves and this is kind of within our wheelhouse of things that we know we can do pretty basic framing doing some small concrete pads closing in a couple walls building the stalls will run power to this I'm doing a little bit of gray water plumbing like we're gonna have a sink over here but we're just gonna drain that out into the field since it is gray water a lot of people asked if we were gonna be putting a bathroom in this barn and we are not we designed our septic system to be able to support our future house one bathroom in our workshop which is going to also have kind of like a social area where we can have like a break room for people who are working here and also when we do classes and stuff there will be like a small kitchen area and a bathroom in there where we can gather people in an inside space and then we have the mobile home that we're currently living in which will later be a guest house so the septic system is for all of that we didn't account for a bathroom in the barn and that again it would up the price a lot to have to do more on the septic system to account for a bathroom and this may be TMI for all you non-farm folks, but let's be real, like, we're farmers, we just go be outside, like, it's not that big a deal. That's just the reality of it. When it's your land and you've got nearly 30 acres, there's always a place that you could kind of, like, tuck away and pop a squat. And for the next year that we're going to be doing a lot of this construction and projects, we are going to have some subcontractors out here. We're going to be working up towards the front where all the gardens are, and we only have our house in the back corner. Um, we're, I'm going to get a porta potty or something out there. And just have that serviced weekly because putting a bathroom in here to account for that need it still would be inconvenient it's still back you got to go through the animals I want it up in the front where anybody who's coming as a sub to like work on our house or any of the other projects that we have going on they have one really close we're definitely getting to that time where the goats are getting pretty rotund Maya's straining the milk, and I'm gonna wait for him to get back out here to tell you guys the layout of this barn. Hey, Toby. What's up, dude? What do you think? I think it's pretty cool. You think it's pretty cool? Mm-hmm. You gonna spend some time out here? Maybe. You know what this is gonna be, which is gonna be really exciting. What? The maternity ward, where the babies get born. Oh. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Kind of. Kind of. What do you like about the maternity ward? What do you like about animals being born? Uh, they're cute. They're cute. What do you not like about it? 
It's kind of gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While I wait for dad, Toby, he's gonna come out and show how we're laying things out. You wanna open the big barn doors? Yeah. All right, why don't you do that? I'll hold the camera. I was gonna set the camera down and open them so everybody could see, but I was afraid the goats would get the camera. Hold on, this is some clever mechanism. Okay, so you open, there we go. You got it, now flip it up. Okay, let me come back here so I can get my shot. Very cool. Helen was watching you. Oh, hi, Helen. Oh, is a nice cow. Yeah, she is nice. Nice. I don't know where they think they're going. Look at Katie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Helen lives Where is she? Katie. There she is. Yeah. Hey, Katie girl. <laughs> Come sweet Maya. Yeah. Look at you. You are the most popular man in the barn. <laughs> um. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm hiding. <laughs> you think you're gonna need a bigger post? <laughs> like, hey, you're not, I'm sorry that you're not six inches wide. That's a bad joke. <laughs> no, but it, seriously, look, it worked. Oh, I, just, I can't believe it's working. She's like, where'd he go? <laughs> Maya. <laughs> so you pleased with your barn? This is a magnificent barn. It is, isn't it? It's worth the wait. Yeah. The wait or the... You did a good job. Maya designed this barn. He sat down with the company and chose all the details and the colors and put windows up here in the top and raise did... Raise the sidewalls to make it higher. Raise the sidewalls. He did a really good job. We really like it. It turned out beautifully. So do you want to tell them where everything is kind of going to go? Inside here is 36 feet. And then the sidewall section is another 12 feet. So it's totally 48 by 60, correct? All right. And it is 12 feet high sidewalls. Yes. And so the doors are Two 12. Two dads, right? Two dads, yes. If you stand up against it at 6-1, we can show how the dad measurement works splendidly. If you stack Maya up on top of Maya, you have two dads tall, your dad. Yep, my, my dad's 6'2", two, so it works, too. Wait, dad's 6'2"? No, I'm my six dad's. One. He's 6'1". It'd have right. to be your grandpa. Yeah, then you'd just have to say it was two grandpas tall. Yeah. But you could say dad's, too, because your dad yeah. is also an right. appropriate measuring People apparatus. People are confused at this point. <laughs> <laughs> she found See, you again. I came out from behind the <laughs> She won't. <You> tricked me. <laughs> so, 12-foot sidewalls, 12-foot doors. So what are you going to do? here in the space. I'm gonna shut this because this is so bright. Okay. All right, so what's the plan in here? Uh, we're gonna do a double stall here. Which means, so so every one of these, this is, 12 feet. this is 12 feet. These are 12 feet sections. And so we can go from these posts to this and make 12 by 12 stalls. Right. But this one's gonna be a double, why? This one's gonna be a double for cow calving. Yes, so for cow calving. Give them extra space. Yeah, that way we can keep mama cows with their calves for just a couple of days, isolated from everything. And also there'll be space for us to safely be in with them if we need to be. Yeah. Because 12 by 12 can get a little tight with a cow that's in labor. So Now beyond that, these are gonna be 12 by 12 stall, 12 by 12 stall. So this yeah. side will have three stalls, two regular oh, size and one double. Stall. Oh, yeah, three, one, two, three. Yeah, and then down here. Well, we're also gonna like have to regrade all the sand clay to make sure it's flat. But we'll get all that graded and then we'll, we're gonna frame up a concrete pad here and then frame a feed room. Mm -hmm. with the door. So this will actually be an enclosed room with what, like an eight foot ceiling, nine foot ceiling? Something like that. And then you're gonna frame it so that the top, you can get up on top of there. I'll so we'll the do like- And put a ladder on the side, like a wood ladder, so we can store use. stuff up there if we need to. And this is gonna be a rodent proof room, as rodent proof as possible. Yeah, it's not guaranteed, but it'll be as much as we can. We'll probably put feed inside of 
barrels or something. Old deep freezers, we've yeah, used those. Like that. We'll find a way, learn as we're going. I don't know, you know, we may be able to build it with treated lumber and sealing all the edges and that may actually work. If rodents start getting in there, we can escalate the yeah. How storage, you know, the necessary storage precautions as far as putting it inside plastic or deep, old deep freezers, things like that. So one of the things that we kept in mind when designing this is there's actually going to be a drive that comes down here. And we made this where it could be a drive. It, up here, there's a gate all the way up at the top corner of our property. So that road from our property is paved and the other road is actually gravel or gr like really gravel and dirt. And so we, one of the reasons for putting the barn where we did was because we order our feed and we get a one month supply at a time. And that's a lot, it's a few pallets of feed and it actually gets delivered when we order from a place to get non-GMO feed and they actually deliver it on an 18 wheeler the idea was they could just stop there on the paved road and we could come up with like the tractor or trailer and get the feed and drive it all the way down here and unload it right here into the barn all right and the other side this will be a combination we're going to utilize the outside stall and the inside stall <laughs> You love cows. <laughs> cows love you. Quit bossing me around. If you know anything about me, you know I don't like being controlled. <laughs> Quit. Go on. Go on. Back up. Back that up. Be nice. Look, gentle touches. We're going to put the milk stanchion here. And this is where we'll milk. And then in here, we'll probably, we're gonna pour another pad, put a door on that end on the inside that'll seal off everything on the other side of the barn. And I think we'll probably run like a split door here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs> I'm a one woman man. He's gone, where'd he go? She heard you talk. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> she got you. She heard you talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm thinking a split door. So, I'm thinking like a split door and design it in a way that's got like some kind of like, like you would put that at the bottom of a window when you close it. Something like yeah. flexible rubber. That'll keep most of the dust out, but that way we can open half of it when we're passing milk through or handing stuff over, things like that. Um, I think it'd be more functional than a full-size door. Yeah. And then in here? And then in here, we're gonna run shelving. Uh, I'm gonna run a stainless steel sink, and we're just gonna drain it out into that drainage ditch. I mentioned that earlier, how we weren't gonna, gonna do- It's just gonna be gray water, so right. it won't make any difference. Um, mostly it'll just be rinsing milk off of the stuff that we're milking with. You are putting a small tankless. And I'm gonna put a tankless, small tankless water heater in here. So um, we can have hot water so to wash things. we have hot water to clean things and to sterilize things. And then a fridge. And then I'm thinking about running a fridge for milk. extra milk or medicines, different things like that. You know, the other thing is, is like when we're making this much milk, like especially for like, you know, we've been giving milk to Papa T and Lisa and like some of our friends that we've made and i think it would be easier on us if we could just say hey you guys need milk just come up to the barn and grab a half gallon put your old jars back in the milk room. right um that way if we're working and you know we don't over you know what i'm saying they need milk and they don't want to interrupt here. us they can come get it without it being a yeah complicated that's a good process idea. so that's kind of why i was thinking that also and also like we'll be able to put a wall of shelves right here in this room for all the stuff you kind of need close by Jars, for lids, this space. filters, the stainless steel. Yeah, our milking, milking machine, machine, once we everything. have that. Um, all the calving stuff, the kidding stuff, everything will be right here close by. Get it out of our house because right now we're dealing with a lot of clutter and inability to organize just because all this necessary stuff, we don't have anywhere to put it. Right. And that these two rooms, the feed room slash tack room. Yeah, I'll put like leads, halters. If I have any saddles I end up keeping for future use, I'll keep them stored in there so the rats don't eat them. And then in here, all of the kitchen stuff that we need. So Toby had a really good idea 
Uh, as far as dealing with the rodents out here, what was your idea? We could get some what? Uh, uh, barn cats. Barn cats, that's right. And I think that's a great idea and we probably will do that. Rodents are unfortunately just a reality of living on a farm and if you've got a barn, you've, you've got mice or rats. That's just part of it. And so, like locking down your feed the best you can is beneficial. We gotta think like this poop that's in here, it's got corn in it. Like there's, there's always gonna be something for them to eat in a barn. And by having barn cats, that's just a good way to keep your spaces rodent free. All right, so let's talk about the stalls on this side, which this was really cool design. And I actually didn't even realize this is something that Maya had done until they started building it. But you want to come over and talk about these stalls? So this is a feature for like one of their horse bar designs and I utilized the framing but then removed the doors that they would put in because I wanted to do something different. But essentially what this will do is we'll build the stall inside and then we'll build a stall outside and each of these four stalls will have an inside outside aspect with a gate uh, in between. I think it'll be good for when we have to keep goats in to be able to give them outside time and inside time like in the summer mm -hmm. the ventilated stall i think would be better whereas like if it's colder we can put them on the right the four-sided and then um when we are brooding meat birds before we get them out on grass i think these stalls will be yeah useful for that so there will be four of these stalls that have both inside and outside so they're technically um 12 by 12 outside 12 by 12 inside and I thought that was a really great idea. Now where we live, it's hot most of the time. Right now it's New Year's Eve and I am really overdressed in this very light sweatshirt. I'm it's, overdressed. <laughs> it's like, it's very warm outside. And of course in our summers here in South Carolina, it's very common for it to be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius. I mean, it's just a hot place to live, very high humidity. So having this extra ventilation and then also like if we have if we have like a mama goat that's given birth we like to keep them isolated for at least a few days and this way they've got some space to get out and uh and and ventilation so i thought this was really cool and i think it's going to be really versatile the 12 foot high sidewall is probably overkill for goats and cows um but it's not if you might keep horses because horses can rear up. If you have a low clearance barn, they can hurt themselves pretty bad. And I don't have any plans to keep horses in here, but I went ahead and added the extra height on the sidewalls in case plans change. Um, that kind of protects us that if we ever do end up getting a horse and needing to use this barn for that, we could. Right, and it's kind of one of those things like making the accommodations on the front end. I mean, once it's built, it's built. And so building in those options on the front end is beneficial. Another benefit of the high sidewalls is for ventilation. Yeah. Uh, it's also why we opted for the insulation on the roof. It'll actually help keep it cooler in the summer in here by trapping the heat between the metal and then the insulation. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it gets really hot, we can have all the doors on this side plus the two big doors on the ends, which will, I mean, that'll ventilate it. Which will be nice. And, and then that way, if the animals need to get out of the hot sun, they can come in here. And also us, like if we have something we're working on, like we can bring it in here and have a cooler place. We're not gonna do anything like heating or cooling this barn. It won't need it um, because of the fact that we have such mild winters and really in the summer, the the thing you do is you try to like manage with ventilation the heat but we'll be able to like plug big fans in here and stuff like that to cool it off well i'm pretty excited about this are you happy with it yes very very happy all right well thank you guys for hanging out with us today we, we, bless, we bless you, you until next, next time. <laughs> try that again okay say it again we bless you until, until next, next time <laughs> <laughs> like you're doing a duck <laughs>